Uh, Jill is, oh, and there's Roger too. We're probably going to have a lot more popping in here. That's all right. It'll be good. Thanks you guys for coming to hang out. Uh, Tristan just started the recording so we can throw it up on the site in case anybody wants to go back and review it. Uh, we have uh, quite a few things on the agenda today. Uh, we want to welcome uh, Jill from Conrad and uh, she's filling one of our spots. We've got a couple more vacant. We need a on the uh, task force. We're looking for a class three school board trustee and a class three tech staff person. So if you folks know of anybody out there that might be uh, beneficial or helpful for the crew, that'd be great. Send them our way and we'll get them added. Uh, fortunately today uh, for our uh, update on modernization, Zam is not here. Uh, Zam Aldina, he's our project manager for our um, power school for the implementing the power school systems that we have purchased this summer. Those were uh, Unified Insights, which is basically a high powered gems product. We also have the data lake, which is called Connected Intelligence. That's supposed to connect all the pieces on the back end. So it makes it easier for everybody's data to flow and take out some of those manual processes and then there is community engagement which also allows data to be shown displayed and presented out on the internet and the web so i have uh, just a short uh, presentation here that we're using for this stage of the game and we started that project in uh, July after we got everything done and actually got all the all the pieces together and uh, contract signed and all that stuff. So uh, right now we'll throw this out on the on the modernization site and data task force site. They're basically all the same page with all the references and uh, material that you guys can go review and look at and uh, shoot questions our way if you have any. So uh, the overview of it is we had House Bill 367. It was a modernization that was really the precursor to purchasing that um, product uh, set that I just uh, defined here. And then uh, also up on that is the latest report of the project, all the things that are going on with that. That's also on that modernization uh, portion of the page. And there's a couple of links in here for that. Uh, if you guys want to go see that once we get that uh, posted out there. So uh, this this past summer we had uh, some assessment of our systems, uh, inventory, uh, looking at how all those things kind of play together. We were given some documentation from uh, that was with uh, Amazon. Uh, they were subcontracted by PowerSchool to do that portion of the work. Uh, that also um, kind of goes hand in hand with what's going to happen in the future as far as the applications go and building a plan towards that end. Um, we purchased the three products this summer. We're consolidating a few uh, teams and uh, uh, MSIS, which you guys are probably familiar with. Uh, Nicole will talk a little bit about the teams and IC uh, work that's been going on this summer. Uh, along with that, uh, our current activities right now, we're heavy into trying to get the data connected. So we have a uh, power schools building us a data lake, which the information is supposed to flow into that lake from the different SISs. And if they're, let me back up a step, if they're not infinite campus, the infinite campus data is still going to flow the same from the district district edition or the montana edition up to the state edition which is where we do the vast majority of the work that we have um, along with that work we're trying to get the information and flow from some of the power schools we're working with Calspell to do a uh, pilot because they're actually hosting their own system as opposed to power school hosting 
And so we're working on that process and those uh, flows to try to get that information into the data lake. Along with that, we're working on an accreditation addition to the Teach Montana product. So if you're familiar with Teach Montana, uh, that was the teacher licensure system and uh, RANDA or RNA solutions has another product that works with the accreditation side of that. And we're working uh, with them and that project is flowing. Um, actually, I can probably cut out the uh, portion of that that's down below in the agenda. Um, that project just got started here about a month ago and they're laying, currently laying the groundwork for those connections with the TMT system and we'll be prepping all the aspects of things to be collected come this January. So they're working hot and heavy in that right now. Um, any questions so far? If you guys do just holler. Um, I can't see anybody on the screen the way I have these things presented, but we'll just keep plugging away. Uh, then we have the uh, chatbot. That RFP is in review up at DOA, uh, the Department of Administration and their uh, Services um, Procurement Bureau. And we're hoping that that gets back to us here shortly so we can get that RFP out. And I'll run over the uh, chatbot uh, information here in a little bit. And then uh, we'll have Tristan talk about the Qualtrics survey expansion tool with the comprehensive needs assessment. So I already mentioned the data lake and basically think about it as the place where all the data is going to be collected and we'll be able to share and integrate uh, that information for all the purposes of put, pushing whatever is allowed to be pushed out similar to GEMS and whatever is only allowed to be seen by the schools it'll have the security based around that so that information is protected um, i've already mentioned the unified insights part and the community engagement uh, so far in the project and the milestones we have all the uh, assessment work done which are these first three lines in the project and right now we're uh, working on the uh, connected intelligence application and we're looking at go live for that come July. Now on the site itself, let me see if I can pull that up here. Um, here we go. There are um, links on that website to. Hold on a second. Sorry. So if you go to the front page of the OPI site, you'll look for the data modernization K-12 task force. There's the current legislative report, which was done uh, last month, the end of October, and we have the project milestones. Uh, if you're looking in, into that, it's pretty rudimentary. Uh, it has a description of the milestones here for the project, and then there's also the project plan on the Gantt chart. And if you're kind of nerdy like we are and you want to get into that kind of stuff, you can get down into the details of what's going on with all these things, where they are at from a schedule standpoint. And this is updated um, every couple of weeks uh, if there are any major changes. So any questions on any of that? I know there's a lot of, a lot of information out there. Good so far, okay. Uh, out here also, uh, the top part of this page is the data modernization, has all the uh, information related to that. And then for your guys' benefit, we have the data task force and what our, our task is and the things that we're supposed to be doing. So, uh, let's see. On the agenda, we just went through the modernization, showed you guys the links. Um, and then talked about the TMT and the accreditation. And I think the next thing on the agenda is our survey tool, which we have uh, been using Qualtrics. You may have seen that from uh, any of the ESSER uh, surveys that we've sent out. If you guys are involved with that or utilized any of those types of things. 
Um, that's the same product that we're using right at this point in time. And along with that, uh, we have Tristan Leverage, who really kind of manages all those surveys and whatnot, making sure that they're working, and then puts a lot of them together. So she worked uh, with our program staff to do the uh, CNA, so the Comprehensive Needs Assessment. And so with that, Tristan, I'll give you the floor and you can talk a little bit about that for everybody. Hi, Chris. Hey, everyone. Um, so yeah, the Comprehensive Needs Assessment was successfully deployed early in September and we've been receiving responses. We're almost to 3,000 responses um, from stakeholders throughout the state. Um, so it's really exciting to see that our assessment is being utilized by districts, as well as uh, the CNA itself. We've developed a process for the re results to be requested from districts. Um, so once a district has closed their collection period, the district superintendent can reach out to um, the OPI through a, a different Qualtrics survey to request those results. And we populate a uh, dashboard, which we just put into a PDF and then email over to the district superintendent to be uh, sent out to their stakeholders to be reviewed. Um, uh, Chris, do you have any, should be adding anything else? Do you have I, any questions? I don't think so. Um, anybody out in the field, any of you guys have any questions for Tristan at all? Okay. Oh, Sheila. Yep. Tristan, I do have a question. Um, when it comes to that CNA, uh, is it is it going to be broken down by who you claim to be a, as a stakeholder when you get on? So your questions vary. Correct. So, yes. Okay. Um, we currently, so I could tell you if you're a school board member, um, you've got about sixty questions to answer. District administration uh, individuals have one hundred and fifty seven. Certified staff has. 139 non-certified staff is 75 parents um 55 students grades 9 through 12 or 20 students grades 5 through 8 or 15 and any business cart partners are 22 questions okay um is there do we get to see a sampling of those questions prior or is it just all um online when you log in to answer yeah, we've been getting some um, feedback from the field with that request. And so we have actually created PDFs of each um, individual survey set. And so um, that is actually just gotten up on the website as of today. And then I actually uh, learned that the links weren't working on those uh, on the PDF that they put up. So um, I'm fixing it, but I will send out <laughs> a link to where you'll be able to find the um those links as soon as i get it fixed let me real quick find it does that help sheila yeah and um so what uh, are you or uh, does anybody have a recommendation then for how often that or, or not really often but um what time frame in the year should should we you know we did our one last year in april and i was feeling this would be a little too soon but yet it's different than the one from april so i just kind of wanted a little feedback on that because i would really would like our stakeholders to dig take part in but i want it at a time where it's meaningful for them as well yeah um I am not sure on what our program staff have recommendations for um, as far as when they suggest districts have their stakeholders start taking it. Um, I do know that they have had stakeholders like they've put up a uh, like a table where parents and um, guardians and other teachers can take the CNA during like basketball games, parent teacher conferences, that kind of thing to help get responses. Um, so you could always kind of curb your 
your open period for, uh, okay. to something like that. And I can always have, I'll have our program staff reach out to you to just discuss it and see if there's a better time for you guys to take it. Perfect. Sounds great. Thank you. I appreciate your answers so, and your Thanks, Sheila, for that. Um, we got a question from Adam. I want to, before we get to that, Adam, I want to add one more um, question for you, Tristan. Wasn't part of this work also to narrow down and kind of consolidate the CNAs that OPI has across all of program? Yeah, so I believe there were like 12 separate CNAs that um, programs had been sending out uh, individually from the OPI. And we did a lot of work from uh, combining all of those questions that were being sent out, eliminating duplicates, rewriting uh, question content so that it would be easy for stakeholders to understand. Um, really proud of all of the program staff that put in a whole lot of effort and work uh, to get the CNA to where it is now. I think it, it looks really nice. Super. Adam, you had a question? Yeah, I'm just curious, is there, um, are there sample uh, reports for the information that the schools get back after they do all the stakeholder surveys? Um, there, we are not, we, the OPI is not holding on to that data to be sent out to to this field, um, you'd have to reach out to the districts themselves to request those reports. Um, currently, there's some uh, there's some work still being done on on simplifying the whole process, uh, but ultimately the data is owned by the district and not OPI. So uh, I can't give that to you, but you could reach out to districts or your specific district and have your district superintendent send it out to you if he would like to, or if they'd like to do that. Thank you. you bet. Any other questions for Tristan? Awesome, thank you. All right. Um, Next uh, item on that agenda was the AI chatbots. And one of the things that we did this uh, actually spring and summer, we worked through um, an RFP and the requirements that we had for using chatbots. If you're familiar with any of the chatbot type technology, it uh, really tries to slim down uh, the amount of uh, links you have to go through to try to gather information or get information from websites tries to simplify and improve the user experience to gather that information or get those questions and whatnot answered um, it reduces the staff load on the um, hosts of those websites and the information uh, for us for instance and we get a lot of questions that are uh, repeat and they really have um, an impact on staff time and knowing that people are impatient they have a phone available they have the websites where they can go and they can ask questions of the chat bot and get those answers a lot more quickly than trying to wait for staff to call back or uh, for staff to try to chase down some of the information um, so it's going to uh, help us improve efficiency and whatnot and then hopefully collect and and allow us to analyze the data as to what are the important topics that people are asking questions about um, what are the hot topics of the day and what kinds of things should we maybe be focusing more of our attention to to put information out so it's uh, more, a lot more readily available and more easy to to obtain um, along with that is uh, ensuring the security of the things that we have on our site uh, as well as uh, trying to stay ahead of the curve, like I just mentioned, with um, trying to get feedback on what the hot topics are and, and chase information down for our users. So those are some of the main areas and goals that the uh, chatbot uh, product is supposed to help us with. And we're looking at uh, five main areas that that would work with. One would be the uh, Teach Montana, um, and the uh, questions that come along with that, the uh, AIM site, uh, Infinite Campus and whatnot from the data set there, also e-grants and 
Mayfairs. Uh, those are some of our big hitters. And then, of course, our website itself, uh, trying to uh, find that information and track down that information a lot more quickly than trying to do searches and whatnot within the within those areas. So any questions there? OK. Uh, next on the list, we have uh, Tristan again with the websites. I don't know if you wanted to. Um, We'll talk a little bit about that, if you would. Sure. Um, Thank you. So we are currently um, on the platform uh, .NET Nuke or .NET. Yeah, I think it's .NET Nuke um, DNN uh, for our website platform, um, and it's been working all right. It's it's maybe not the best uh, platform for us, and so we have been looking to um, move to a different platform. We had been discussing with Granicus uh, to be moving to one of their websites uh, hosted, being hosted by one of their um, products, but I think that that's not gonna be the best fit for OPI. And so we're kind of starting from scratch now and looking at some other opportunities. Um, other opportunities include, you know, any any other uh, just general platform. We could also go with uh, SATSD again, be kind of hosted underneath their umbrella. Uh, but we'll just continue kind of uh, evaluating and figuring out what our best option is um, going forward. Chris, do you have anything to add? Nope, you pretty much covered it all. Uh challenges of trying to make sure that we stay up to date and get relevant information out there so and around here things are changing by the minute so it's kind of kind of fun exciting and sometimes a little tedious but we're getting her done and getting things out there um next on our list are the uh, data collections we have nicole thuat with us she is our aim manager our uh, achievement in montana uh, really, a lot of you know it by the Infinite Campus and the data collection side, and more than likely, she's probably talked to every one of you. So I'll have uh, Nicole give us a, a little update on what's going on with the teams and the IC work. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask at the end. Thanks, Nicole. All right, thank you. So yes, I am Nicole Thuad. I'm the AIM Unit Manager. And we've had a pretty busy fall so far. Um, we've been out on the road for about three weeks from anywhere from Sydney all the way up to Kalispell and pretty well everywhere in between. And I can tell you that our staff has very much enjoyed being out and working with the districts again in person. It has been a lot of fun. I know it's a lot of work and we have a lot of big changes coming up in our unit. Um, but it was good to have that one on one time to work with all of our districts. So I first want to say thank you to all of you for getting data in for us. We were able to complete the A and B collection within the required time frame. So school finance wanted us to have that completed by the 18th of October, and we were able to get all of our districts submitted on time for the A and B collection. So thank you for your work on that and for getting that done. We've also completed the fall enrollment, which is the federal enrollment and the fall program participation, excuse me, fall program participation. So we're well on our way with that. Um, in regard specifically to the infinite campus conversion to from the teams to infinite campus, we are continuing to work hard on that. So that was the primary focus of being out on the road in September. We've been working one on one with districts pretty much all summer and we continue to do that through the fall. I know personally I'm on the phone doing trainings with at least three to five districts pretty much every day of the week and my staff is also doing that as well. So we'll continue to work with those districts one to one if you need us to in groups setting up teams or zoom meetings whatever works for our districts. We also um, are working on making some of this data collection a little easier for districts. So last night we were able to update Infinite Campus for the 
personnel file upload. So now we've worked with both Black Mountain and Foxy Lady to get a file upload format for those districts to transfer their HR data into Infinite Campus. So that is all of your staff with FTE district assignment start and end dates. And hopefully by the beginning of next week, we will have the teacher class files. So course, section, staff history, and roster available for districts to upload that information from third-party systems to Infinite Campus as well. So we're working really hard on that. I got some great news from Jennifer Straw today, who is my reports guru. She says we are up to 90,000 plus rostered students. So it looks like about two thirds of the students in Montana have been assigned to courses in Infinite Campus. So that's a great step forward in getting some of that work done. So we're very excited about the work that's being done at the district level to complete these tasks. I know it's a lot of work and a big lift, but just remember, we're all here to help you. Um, if you get stuck or don't understand anything, please don't hesitate to give us a call. We are also working on getting out additional documentation. So there's a brand new step-by-step -step checklist guide that's published on the AIM webpage. We have a tow crosswalk out there that has every position code and the required data entry in Infinite Campus for those positions. And of course, you're welcome to call or email and ask for a one-to-one -one session and we'll jump on and have you walk through everything in your system and help you run through our reports and our validations so that you understand the data entry that you need to complete. So we're here to help. I have a fantastic staff and we're doing all the work we can and we're here to help. So just please keep that in mind. So thank Nicole, you. Nicole, would your you work. mind dropping those? Uh, one of those links or two in the chat here. I will absolutely do that. That would be great. All right. Does anybody have any questions for Nicole? Don't be shy. All right, Nicole, this is Sheila. Um, there was some issues with calculating calendar or the calculating the hours in Infinite Campus. Has that been solved or what's our target for that? Or do we not have to worry about it for a while? We don't have that issue solved yet. Um, please do run through those calendar validations and make sure absolutely everything other than aggregate hours is accurate. I know Jennifer has been working. Pretty much her brain has been working around the clock, if not physically trying to figure out how to get that information. And we're working with Infinite Campus as well. Um, we know where the number is. We just can't figure out how to get it on a piece of paper yet. So we're working hard on that, but we will let you know. Just keep an eye on the AIM webpage and keep an eye on the state announcements on within Infinite Campus as well. Okay. Um, also, there's... Um... I don't know if it's concern or rumor or whatever that the the fall count is like 2200 students lower and they're wondering about whether infinite campus is calculating or have we lost that many students for the state or anything have you guys heard that or is there any anything we should do or know about that right so that is a concern because the numbers went down and it was not an expected trend I do know that we do have several staff here at OPI that have been all over that and we've made calls to districts and pretty much every district we're calling is verifying. In fact, yes, their counts are down. So, you know, we're just asking. I think there was an email that went out from Masbo that was asking all of the school clerks to go into Mayfairs and run their district summary reports and make sure that all their counts were correct. Uh, it's, I think it's just an unexpected bump in the trend, but we are finding that we are down a few couple thousand students and for some reason it is what it is and we're not 100% sure what happened. Interestingly enough, it does seem to be a lot of first graders, counts in first graders. I don't know if you're seeing that, Sheila, as well, but we've yeah, seen we that are, in a couple of the big are, districts. Yeah, we're down, we started the year down probably 10. Um, but we've uh, we've had quite a few move in this uh, first quarter, and so we're probably down four now or five. So um, that's been different 
um, that we've had a steady stream of them coming in. So, um, but yeah, our numbers were down just a tad too at the start. So, okay, um, that's all I had. Thanks. Oh, and I did want to say thank you so much for um, your patience, uh, Nicole and all of her staff, because I've been on some other calls with some very frustrated and uh, super intendants that anything is change is hard and they're very calm and, and they're very, we will help you. And by golly, they will. And because Nicole has responded to my emails in the middle of the night sometimes to, to help me off the ledge. So I want to just say thank you to all, you all for uh, taking our questions and, and, and just trying to relax everybody because I know we'll get to it, but sometimes it's just stressful, but I appreciate you. Thank you. That's great. So is anybody else out there that's on right now? Are you guys seeing uh, lower numbers in, in certain areas in your area, in your districts? So Lima School didn't, we didn't have any kindergarten last year. Typically we have four or five. And uh, so we had zero kindergartners last year. We had a couple of retentions in first grade. So um, that's the only reason we have first grade this year. We didn't even have a kindergarten last year. Wow. Yeah, up in Kalispell, we're down a decent chunk at the elementary level. Oddly enough, we're up at the high school, but we're down quite a bit at the elementary. You have a rough number, Eric, that might be beneficial for us? Well, it's only about like 50 kids down K-12. Um, okay. But yeah, like I think we're like, I don't know, however that shakes out what we're like up. Uh, about like 50 kids at the high school, so down like 100 at the elementary in the math rank, or 150 down at the elementary, maybe. Okay, awesome. I mean, not awesome, Pretty but similar understandable, right? As well. A bigger part. Similar, pretty similar in Missoula um, as well as Kalispell. Okay. Wow, well, okay. That's crazy. Not sure where that trend is, right? Or what's happening out there? It's kind of interesting. So, any yeah, any thoughts? To see once we can Oops. finally get some of the data from, um, like homeschool, private school, and some of those, just to see, like maybe we're just seeing a big increase there. Because I know for up. Yes, us and up I just Cal, got so. those. I just got those numbers, uh, updated numbers today from uh, my staff member who does that private school collection, homeschool collection, and we're not seeing an increase in numbers there. Even in some of those counties, we're seeing decreases as well. So we were thinking that maybe it was coming out there, but it doesn't appear that's the case. Wow. Interesting. I mean, especially like, you know, I'm sure there's other areas in the state too, but, you know, in Kalispell, we have a huge population boom. So it's like, where are these kids going? It's a great question. Well, we'll certainly keep our eyes and ears out on that. And I'm sure if it's something that's significant reasoning wise, then that information will be put out. OK, um, does anybody else have any questions or anything for the staff? OK, what I'd like to do is for all all of our uh, all my OPI staff that's on right now, if you turn your cameras on, we'll introduce you. We have um, you guys already met Tristan and Nicole. I believe we have um, Marla and Andy on. Uh, there's Andy. Andy is our senior IT manager. So if you guys have security access problems or any of that kind of stuff, all of those things head his direction and his crew takes care of all that stuff. And uh, Marla is one of our project managers, business analysts, and she helps Nicole during the, the rough and tough times and also helps manage uh, the project uh, and coding changes that happen within the, the different systems that we have within OPI. And there's a couple others that help with that as well. So uh, do you guys have any questions for any of them? Okay. 
Uh, next steps, we're just proceeding along with the modernization project, trying to make sure that we have uh, getting that data flow, working hard to try to figure out that data flow with both Infinite Campus and PowerSchool, uh, as well as um, some other locations where data is going to be. So we're um, proceeding and working with that over the next several months. And we have the updates going on with the TMT and accreditation project. And as you heard uh, Tristan talk about the CNA, there's still some work being done on that. And then of course, uh, Nicole is probably a little bit busier than the rest of us trying to help get all that data in uh, for everyone and making sure that it's all good so we can try to figure out you know why are numbers low what does this mean what's going on with all that stuff so that's kind of where we're at and then of course um, we have the holidays coming up uh, we are going to be in and out and around uh, sometimes staff take take off a little bit of time but we want you to know that we're always here to try to answer questions be helpful um, talk with you face to face we love doing that uh, I'd encourage you if you're in Helena, um, I would be more than happy to sit down and uh, we have a couple of favorite spots where if you are of the mindset of having a libation once in a while, we'd be happy to, to uh, do that after hours. Um, but from the work standpoint, if you guys have any questions or anything, please get those to us and we'll be happy to to assist. Uh, we don't want anyone out there getting to the point to where they are frustrated. Um, I, I think it was uh, Sheila mentioned that change is hard and it is hard here as well. So we're just trying to uh, do the right thing, get get all that work done in a manner to where hopefully at the end of the day it makes things a little easier and we won't have to have as much frustration in our world. So, um, any other questions, or does anybody else have anything to add today? Okay. Well, I want to thank everybody for uh, participating. And if there are any follow-ups or anything, please send them our way, and we'll we'll get answers out to you as soon as we can. Other than that, have a great Montana fall day. We actually don't have any snow on the ground right now, so it's kind of nice. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Chris. Bet. Thank Goodbye. you.